Greetings, everybody. Sorry about that. So this was originally meant to be one continuous recording. We had some issues with our devices here. We do apologize for the inconvenience. This will be a two-parter. With that, <clears throat> we're still learning. So we Rookie move. <laughs> rookie move on our end. So we really appreciate your patience. We appreciate you spending the time to enjoy and watch this video. At the end of the first half of the recording, what we were talking about was the movie Trigger Effect. And we're working our way through a series of points, emergency preparedness mistakes, mistakes that the characters made throughout this movie and in the buildup to the movie, and things that the viewer can do, actions that they can take here in the present to prepare themselves for similar situations in the future. So with that, you brought up a sixth point of commentary. Jack, what was that? That was training. Training. Can you give us a little bit more background on that, Jack? Uh, as I said before, in this movie, you don't want the first time you ever handle or manipulate a firearm to be during a local or national SHTF. 1996 hit the ball. It hit the nail right on the head, I should say. So in this movie, for our viewers that are haven't watched the movie yet, there is a nationwide power outage that goes on for several weeks. And because of that, people are panicking. And mm -hmm. the characters and the whole city in this movie actually rushes the only gun shop in town, or, or their local gun shop, I should say. Yeah. The gun shop is completely wiped out. There's a long line of people who are many of them trying to buy their very first gun for the first time. Mm -hmm. And many people or when they, it's their turn in line, they're just being given and they're buying at outrageous prices, even for by today's standards, uh, whatever it is that they have left. And so, a six hundred dollar watch <clears throat> for a hundred dollar shotgun, and this yeah. is in nineteen ninety six. This is nineteen ninety six. So that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot more money than it sounds like by today's standards. So, at, if in the movie, the main characters they get their turn in line. And they walk up to the counter and the gun salesman gives them a, a shotgun with, and initially he doesn't even hand them any ammo. He's just giving them the shotgun and they're going to pay an outrageous amount of money for it. For a hundred dollar no shotgun. Yeah. And they have no cash. All of the digital transactions that you could have done at that time are down. So there's a bunch of issues with that, but they have to finally demand ammunition for it. And the guy hands them a single box of shells for yeah. a weapon that they have never had any experience with they've never touched and the gun the gun guys are really the gun salesmen are really just trying to get them out the door because they are just swarmed so mm -hmm. they're not there to give a, a firearm safety one on one class they no. are and this is before the era of these guys okay you can't just take your phone and go and look up a video on how to use the thing so they've purchased a weapon and they have no idea what they're doing that is so similar to what took place here during the health crisis of the last couple of years mm -hmm. so for those of you that are watching this in the future during this whole health crisis that started off in 2020 we had a record number of gun sales in this country people are just swarming people were just buying whatever they could get their hands on supply chain issues manufacturers couldn't keep up and so you had a lot of people that just ended up with whatever they got because they were fearful and they just needed a gun jack you're in an interesting line of work what are your thoughts on that stupid <laughs> i mean i i hate not to be correct but that's just stupid it's idiocy yeah. um if you don't know how to operate a gun or even handle a gun, you, you have no business going and buying one or owning one. Um, find other means of self-defense and protection. Now, there's a difference. That's not an anti-2A statement. What he's saying is, for, for clarification for the viewers, and Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, means you're encouraging people to go ahead and make those purchases of those tools and to get that training before an emergency takes place. Is that right? Correct. Correct. If you're in a bad situation and you rush into something you don't fully understand, 
of that nature with those tools, you may be more of a danger to yourself and others than you are in health. Correct. So that's the point we're trying to make. We, we encourage you to go and do all that. But yeah. There's <laughs> a process to it. You got you to gotta make sure that you're getting the training from a qualified teacher, qualified instructor, someone you can trust, and that you're educating yourself on how this whole process works. I mean, because these main characters already got ripped off by the gun store, and then they don't even handle the damn thing properly. They leave it in their living room. They leave it in the living room during a situation where there are break-ins going in, going on throughout the neighborhood, and people are scared. There's no power. If you need that thing in a moment's notice, it's got to be within hunt reach. You got to be immediately and ready. And yeah, ready. you can't be all oh, somebody's breaking in. Let me let me go through the house and try to find the shotgun in the dark. Like it's not and load it up. <laughs> load it up. And that's another thing too. They end up dropping the. Going back to not knowing what you're doing with guns, going back to that very first point of this whole series that you made about being aware of the type of woman that you're in a relationship with. This woman, in her drunken rage and her moodiness, power being that she goes and she throws the shotgun in the swimming pool. I she think throws. I would move to a foreign country just so I could smack a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's something I had to say. But... <laughs> okay. uh, again, there were so many things that were done wrong in this movie. Very cringeworthy. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. That, like, it was actually a good movie because you're seeing, like, it, it's it's forcing you, it's it's forcing that emotional reaction. Like, oh man, these people are dumb. It was difficult. It was difficult it was to watch. Of it was difficult to watch, but you're like, thing is, you know, people like this. We've lived. You and I have lived through a, a series of events in our life where we've actually seen people do stuff like this. Yeah, and so it, it's relevant, guys. It's but even look like there's a term called conscientious objector. It's fine if you don't believe in this or you don't subscribe to this. Be whatever it may be. But that, that doesn't mean you go and affect the other person. You know no. what I mean? <laughs> Even conscientious objectors, like in the military and stuff, they weren't making it more difficult for other people. They're just saying, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> this wasn't one of my official bullet points, but it's something that's come to mind right now. And I'd like your thoughts on it. And I'd like the viewers to hear your thoughts on it. I won't get into too much detail. Our friend Jack here is in a very interesting line of work. Okay. He is much more qualified to speak on a lot of these topics than the conventional keyboard assassin on the internet. So in this movie, they've got this long shotgun. They decide that their best option at this point with no end to this disaster in sight is to get what little gasoline they can muster, put it into a vehicle, and they're going to they're going to evacuate. They're going to drive to Lord knows wherever. I think it was to... their the husband's parents' house or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're gonna link up with some family in a different city. So they're gonna go and they're gonna take a risk and they're gonna go and try and make the journey. So they've got this long barreled shotgun that's not designed for home defense. It's designed for hunting. <laughs> that's going to be in their minds their defensive tool in their essential essentially their their refugee pilgrimage cross country in a society where that's already becoming destabilized people are desperate there's already robberies murders things like that so again without spoiling too much of the movie a shootout takes place between somebody who has a concealed carry firearm and these un this untrained person with the long barreled shotgun. Yeah, a snub nose revolver that never jams. <laughs> so when that shootout, the guy who had the concealed carry pistol in close quarters, close proximity, got the drop on the guy. Yep. The bullet. Okay. Yep. Yep. So this is an area of controversy within the preparedness community on YouTube and online. You have a lot of people that go online and they say the very first firearm, the very first security tool that somebody needs to purchase is their rifle. Okay. Mm. The other camp that says, no, you're 
very first tool that you should consider getting and getting trained on is it should be your everyday carry pistol, pistol, your concealed carry weapon, the weapon that you're always most likely to have on you when a situation goes south. Now, in this movie, that was actually a really interesting play out Dynamic. And of you know, those two philosophies. One guy has this giant thing that he can't, he doesn't have the element of surprise because you can see the long barreled gun. He actually started the conflict too. Yeah, he started the conflict. Now, so not only did he have, did he not have the element of surprise, but he was sort of the aggressor. Yeah. And he had this long barreled weapon that he couldn't easily get into action. Whereas the other guy, was armed the entire time and you would never have known it was not apparent and he also was able to get that tool much more quickly into action and put it to work successfully i might add so in your opinion jack in your professional opinion because you are a professional if somebody is considering all of this they're considering the events that took place in this movie or they're considering they're trying to con by their first security tool. Mm -hmm. Are you in the, the rifle camp as your first gun or the handgun and or concealed carry gun as your first tool? I would like to make it easy, but I'm not going to. So <laughs> <laughs> I look at yeah. I look at it as two different things. You have your home defense and you have your EDC. What's EDC for our viewers that don't know? Uh, your everyday carry. Okay. So like everyday concealed carry pistol. Right. So okay. if you're telling me this person's only going to go out and pur purchase one weapon, well, then I would say, yeah, get your everyday carry because it's going to help you at home and you're going to be having that on you more times than not if you're doing like several channels preach. Um so it's the most important you would say right now if you're okay. willing if you're willing to purchase <laughs> more than one firearm your best home defense is going to be a rifle or a shotgun and that okay. is because in high stress situations and in your home base you the theory is in your home base you already have the upper hand you have the advantage and a rifle in your home base is going to do a lot better against the pistol. Or a shotgun in your home base is going to do a lot better against the pistol because we can talk about training, um, accuracy, ballistics, all, 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 all the factors that go into who's wielding this firearm, right? Yeah. You know, um, if it's me, I feel proficient enough in all three categories, right? If it's my wife, I probably want her pointing that 12 gauge shotgun downstairs and putting 12 BBs yeah, <laughs> down range, shot, you yeah. know? Yeah, some butt yeah. shot down range, you know? <laughs> um, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so I think so, you're a lot more in my camp than you realize. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fully, I fully agree with you. So there's no debating the fact that anything coming out of a long gun is ballistically superior. Right. It's also usually a lot easier to teach people how to be proficient enough on right. those platforms. The camp that I'm in is if you're only going to buy one or you're only going to buy your first and you need to immediately address the thing that's going to be perhaps the, of the most value to you right away, Handgun. Yep. Some some you can conceal on your person, your body type, with your your kind of clothing. Because you're exactly right. You can carry that thing with you concealed wherever it's legal for you to do so, wherever it's legal for you to do so. Or not legal. <laughs> we can have that discussion too. <laughs> but essentially it's something that you can have on your person at all times. And when you come yeah. home, if you only have one in the very least, you've got something that will also yeah. flex its way into that home defense role. Yeah. So you know, most, some professionals, quote unquote, will go and say, no, no, you just need to go and get a rifle. And say, it may not be that simple. <laughs> yeah. It may not be that simple. So 
<clears throat> that was an interesting that was one of the most interesting parts of that whole movie oh yeah for so, sure oh, yeah. and then i think that kind of goes into my other point which is action versus reaction um in that particular engagement the guy who had the handgun did not want a conflict mm -hmm. but he was more prepared and ready mm -hmm. for when that conflict came to him I think he even tells the guy, like, why'd you make me do that? Why'd you make me do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the guy didn't want a gunfight. Yeah. And the guy did not want a gunfight. He, now, he, not giving too much away to the viewers, he was ready, though. <laughs> he was ready. <laughs> he wasn't looking and for his, a fight, but and he, his, was, he was ready for a fight. His action beat the guy with the shotgun's reaction. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it was just, it was so strange how that whole thing was worked out, but that's so comparable to real life, man. Cause you forget that in real life, most people that are walking around, most people that find themselves in situations like this, these aren't trained professionals. These aren't commandos. These are just people that do sometimes questionable things. And it's just interesting seeing how those situations play out in real life. I think this movie did an excellent job of staging that whole violent encounter with those two characters. That was mm -hmm. outstanding. In, in my opinion, that was outstanding writing. And I think on a low budget too. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's why we didn't get into like the civil unrest in the mm -hmm. city and stuff like that. Cause I'm not sure this director was working with a whole lot of budget, you know, yeah, they they did a great job on playing on your emotions and everything like yeah. that. Um, by by showing so little, they showed so much. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, so that was action versus reaction. You just got to have you got to be ready. And if you're constantly reacting, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. It and, just comes down to that. And and that movie, this movie was full of so many of those. I call those half measures: action versus reactions. You're you're kind of half committed to doing something, but you have or you hesitate when you come time to take it across the finish line. So like yeah. that was that like that guy wanted a gunfight or he thought he wanted a gunfight, but he was not <laughs> he wasn't really about it. And then well, he escalated the situation too far, <laughs> went past the point of no return, and he got shot. Um, but there's another scene in the final portion of that movie where the main character also takes a weapon and he tries to force his way into a home mm -hmm. and in brilliant writing because throughout the whole movie you're staged to make it look like this main character is the good guy and he would never do anything he would never do anything to hurt yeah. anybody intentionally well yeah. when he finds that his family his loved ones are in a highly compromising situation okay he doesn't know who these people are in this house he just knows that he needs to get in that house. So he takes a weapon. And we're talking about half measures, actions versus reactions. When it comes time for him, he finally gets what he wants. He's broken into the house. And there's another person there that's armed. Both of those guys, they're not really about it. Yeah. They, kind, they kind of want to conduct action. They kind of, and one of them, they're kind of being reactive. They're kind of taking action. When it comes time to pull the trigger on, on each other, they can't do it. Yeah. So your inability to go ahead and make a take decisive action and to carry that all the way through, um, in that in this movie, it's put on full blast, and you see it in such an interesting way. Yeah, it was, I agree. It was done really well. Yeah, and then my last point is reliance on government or police slash law enforcement. <laughs> We've seen this play out quite a bit. How did this play out in the movie? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> <laughs> so in the movie, you're, 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 for the viewers out there that are considering watching this, in throughout the movie, you're hearing the people in the movie listening to radios, trying to, or before the power goes out, they're trying to listen to radios. They're trying to get information from the outside world as to what emergency responders want them to do. They're told help is on the way, and then weeks later, help just never comes. Like, there's no answer to any of their problem several weeks in so it makes for an interesting discussion uh jack you've seen some things in your career in your yeah. professional opinion what has been your experience 
when people look at the look at the phone outage. Even some <laughs> agent some agencies are like, if you get a hold well, of us, you're lucky. Sorry, we can't yeah, get to you. Yeah. You know. Well, by the way, if you Google that statements that were released on social media during the AT and T outage, people actually wrote that Jack is not making this up. Um, one of my local PDs in my immediate area put basically if uh, if you if you, if you're able to get through to us, be very direct to the point. Yeah. <laughs> name and your address. <laughs> that might be all the trip. And and it, so contrary to popular misconception, the government is not set up to take care of you. No, and it's not their job to. And a lot of people don't like hearing that. It's a very unpopular opinion with such. But worst case scenario, the government is not coming in to rescue you and save the day. They are average, everyday people like you and I. Okay, they have families. They have wives and kids that they want to, or husbands and kids that they want to go home to. If it's between choosing to put their lives on the line unnecessarily, or, or deciding to do that or going home at night to their families, they're going to go ahead and choose preserving themselves. Yeah, of course. And they're going to be understaffed. They don't have the time to get to you. Uh -uh. And those are the first responders. But then you got to think about the government. It's the, a couple of levels up the government, the bureaucrats. Okay. Yeah. During Hurricane Katrina, it took, what, a week for FEMA to get water to the Astrodome? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. To mobilize basic water to get water to an astronaut and for a disaster. During the uh, the snow storms that we had here in Texas that shut our power grid down for a week, okay, the government didn't have any real solutions for that. PDs between San Antonio and Austin were having to drive to Austin to go to a specific gas station to get gas. Yeah. So, do you think they're going to waste any of that gas coming? <laughs> You, Joe Blow, regular average Joe for some situation that you're facing, it's not going to happen, guys. Yeah. Um, we've been through enough of these kinds of situations throughout our lifetime where we've seen all this firsthand to know that if your plan is to wait on the government to come and rescue you, like they tried to do in this movie, that actually hurt them quite a bit because they did that for the first several weeks in the movie. Yeah. They were waiting on the government or their local municipality, whatever the case, whatever, whatever level of government to fix the issue. And here's the thing. If they had taken action right away at the very beginning of the movie, and if they had taken it at the very beginning of the movie and they had driven to that family's house, that family probably house, would have got there. No problem. Yeah. Gas stations weren't out of gas yet. <laughs> Didn't realize exactly how bad the situation was yet. There wasn't looting yet. There wasn't a whole lot of break-ins throughout the suburbs yet. So they probably would have made it and they probably would never have gotten into a shootout with somebody. They probably wouldn't have experienced a lot of the hardships that they experienced, but because it would have been a 15 minute long movie instead of <laughs> yeah, hour yeah. Long. we just gassed up and we, <laughs> we drove to the ground. <laughs> and that was the end of the movie. <laughs> so, I mean, you never know guys. Um, and, and that brings up Jack again in your professional opinion. I'm over here making a case for, leaving or taking action perhaps even leaving right away if you know a situation is bad some would call that bugging out okay mm -hmm. other people subscribe to this idea of bugging in mm -hmm. what's your professional thoughts on that just know your own capabilities i think i said on the last video in terms of uh, prepping fitness knowing your own capabilities mm -hmm. um on a operational security standpoint you need to know your own capabilities and your family's own capabilities yeah that goes that goes a lot into deciding whether you're gonna <laughs> bug in or not um if you have good ops got op, good opsec and you're confident and you're well stocked and you think you're far enough away from whatever issue by all means bug in yeah um if you know that that's not your situation and you only have, you know, a week to two weeks supply and you know a location that you can get to that's more secure, has more people, more people you trust, more people who are also prepared and like-minded, bug out and bug yeah. out fast. <laughs> yeah. To action versus reaction or inaction. 
Um, hundred percent. I agree with you, man. I tell people prepare for both. Okay. You yeah. don't know. Everybody thinks it's always going to be a global event. People always think it's going to be this major catastrophic event. Well, you and I just going through the health crisis. We see that sometimes it's a very slow degradation. Mm -hmm. You're slowly descending into a worse situation over time. So I say prepare for both. I mean, you okay. should have an emergency supply of food. You should have an emergency supply of water. You should have you know, security, all the necessities that you need to sustain yourself in the event that you can't go to the grocery store and resupply for a couple of weeks at yeah. least. But you should also be prepared to take off at a moment's notice. So having... No, I'll be, what I do is I just have in, in my vehicle, I just keep a bag with some spare clothes, charge of things that I need, prepping supplies, whatever that is. I keep a case of water in the back of my vehicle, some tools for my vehicle. And I always keep my vehicle full of gas, at least half of a tank, if not more. Minimum half so, tank, yeah. Yeah, so if, I mean, if I have to dive out the window right now, as long as I've got my keys on me and nothing else, if I can get to my vehicle, which is usually no more than 25 yards away from me, all right, I hop into that bad boy and I'm going. I'm leaving yeah. the city. I'm whatever the case may be. But I'm also set up, I'm very well stocked to go ahead and hunker down. And ideally, mm -hmm. that'd be what I want to do. But you got to be ready for both. Yeah. You have to be able to slide into each one of those things. Yeah, don't, don't waste your time going to the gun shop don't waste your time going to the bank the bank lines don't waste your time going mm -hmm. to the grocery lines where people are fighting over toilet paper <laughs> that's another thing too man i want to tell people when uh when the health crisis was the very first day we got the everybody evacuate this building and go work from home order when the whole health crisis was first taking place in 2020 right i remember i called you I said, hey, man, what are you seeing on your end? This is, this is what I'm seeing. And I, I stopped in that parking lot at the uh, grocery store. And you and I were talking. I was like, oh, man, yeah, well, this is what I'm seeing, too. We're exchanging just exchanging info. And I said, well, I'm going to stop here at this ATM here in the grocery store. And I'm going to – I already had a cash supply. I yeah. I'm going I'm to top off my cash supply because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. I walked into the grocery store, and there were already people fist fighting – they were people. It was a real trashy. At the time, I was living in a real trashy. But it, it goes to show you, there were already, like chaos has already ensued. I remember I walked in there. It's like there is nothing in this place that is worth me risking my safety being. So I, as soon as I saw that, I just walked out. I mean, yeah, I didn't even accomplish what it is that I'd come in to do. I was like, you know what, it's not worth it. Yeah. So, being is that you want to have all this stuff for our viewers. You want to be well stocked before a crisis. Because when the crisis hits, you don't want to be out mingling with people who are scared and desperate. Mm -hmm. okay? You don't want to be waiting in the grocery lines when there's people that are upset. You don't want to be messing around with any of that. Okay, If you can avoid going out in public when a crisis like that is taking place, that's ideal. Yeah, I you agree. So what would you give this, uh, this movie, okay. 1 to 10? You know, or, or one to ten for the movie itself, and then one to ten on how it compares to prepping in our modern world today. So I think we should perhaps restructure that second category: prepping in. Uh, let's reframe that. If you agree, you're talking about how does it compare to prepping in the modern day times? I would think all of these movies that we're going to reviewing, we should be talking about. How does this movie exemplify prepping concepts? I like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not a movie about how people are doing things correctly. So how does it exemplify prepping in the modern age? Never will. Good, but good, good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Good context for prepping moving forward. Mm -hmm. This film did a good job of showing a lot of these concepts. And I would think. For if we're going to grade them on how well it showed a lot of these concepts, like operational security, knowing your neighbors, uh, being prepared in the event of an emergency situation, arming yourself, uh, traveling, bugging out, violent altercations. I actually think, considering the budget that it had, it did. I would give it a solid eight, believe it or not. 
I was floating at an eight and a half. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I mean, it's not going to win like an Oscar award or anything like that. But in right. terms of preparedness, we're talking about preparedness concepts, natural disasters, uh, a movie that shows the importance of being prepared and it, and it takes the audience through that journey of this is what they did right, this is what they did wrong. Here's a, another major concept that the viewer has to digest and think about, like, what would I do in that situation? I think it did at least an eight. Mm -hmm. In that regard, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have uh, an assignment for ourselves in the audience for our next one? So, a demon, do I have a recommendation for another movie? Mm -hmm. For our I next one? Okay. Don't yet. No. No. But in terms of trigger effect, I would give the movie from both a preparedness concept standpoint and just an entertainment standpoint, I'd give it a solid eight. I think if uh, occasionally I think you might see that movie free with ads on YouTube. Totally. If it's free, totally worth a watch. If you can buy it, oh, yeah. rent it for just a few dollars, less than 10 bucks. Oh, and yeah. You want to just entertain yourself for an evening. You want to entertain you and you know, your spouse or your good buddy for, for an evening. 100% worth the money. Especially, yeah. if you're, especially if you're into prepping and oh, dude, totally. disasters, potential apocalypse stuff. Uh, I know it's kind of geeky, but man, I thought it was an actually it was a really good movie. Yes, I agree. Nice. All right. Well, Jack, if you don't have any other points, I think we've covered just about all of it here. To our viewers, thank you for coming on this journey with us. Thank you for Thanks all again. the support. Again, we're becoming more refined in this process. You're seeing a lot of our uh, mistakes here live. We're not editing anything. So we're keeping it as real as we can, but we're looking to grow and become better along the way. So if you have any suggestions, we ask that you keep them constructive. Go ahead and leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time, and you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, guys.